Hey there, MRA, my real Africanos. This is your girl, Maria Juf, the real Africanos, and welcome to my channel. Look, I just hopped on here right quick because I was thinking about something, right? So I was thinking about the uh, migrant situation that is going on across the world, right? And um, I was thinking um, that there may not even be a migrant situation if it wasn't for um, white supremacy and Western greed, right? So, you know, um, I heard that, uh, Senator, I mean, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, uh, met with the leaders of, uh, Canada and Italy, um, last week, right, to discuss the problem, okay? And so it just got me thinking, okay? I said, what did they think that, I mean, what did they think was going to come of, you know, 400 years of uh, exploiting other countries, from stealing, uh, from robbing, from stealing people's resources, from stealing people's peoples, right? Did they, are they that arrogant that they didn't think that uh, that, that would come back to haunt them uh, one day, right? I mean, we are in such a precarious situation right now. I mean, things are really um, are strange in the world, right? I mean, this system of white dominance is falling, right? I mean, brick by brick, um, piece by piece, right? It is falling and they don't really uh, know what to do, right? They are losing their mind, right? Um, you know, how can, again, how can you uh, spend the last uh, four to five hundred years uh, making sure that un other countries are undeveloped or unable to uh, uh, feed their citizens and care for them for their citizens. Did you not think that uh, the citizens of those countries were going to go to the countries where uh, those resources are located? I mean, people have to survive, right? People have to live. So people are going to do what they have to do, right? So I think it is so hypocritical and just so uh, self-righteous and indignant of, of these uh, Western leaders when they get on, uh, you know, on television or on stage and talk about, you know, just how horrible this problem is and how they are getting fed up with it. Yeah, you fed up with it, but you created it. You created the problem. Everything that we are seeing in the world today, the terrorist activity, right, uh, in uh, Northern Africa and in other African states and, 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 you know, across the country, even the terrorist activities here in the United States, right? Uh, the migrant uh, situation, like I say, in Africa, in other um, um, uh, 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 North American countries, right? You created that, your greed, right? Your um, uh, incessant desire to be looked at as supreme while everybody else is being looked at as uh, inferior, right? So basically, uh, you are just reaping what you sowed, right? You know, I remember being young and I remember asking my mother because, you know, our uh, elders would always say, you know, you reap what you sow, you know, whatever you put out there is going to come back to you. You can't sin, you can't do bad and don't have bad things happen to you, right? But I used to question my mom and I used to say, you know, oh, what about white people, right? <laughs> you know, I hate to continue to just make this a white and black issue, but what about white people? How can they do all that they have done to our people? You know, um, and that was back then, right in the 70s. That was really a little bit closer to uh, the civil rights movement. And when things like that was, uh, you know, uh, the brutality of that movement was really happening. And I would say, how could they do uh, the things that they did to our people and they haven't reaped what they sown? You know, what is going? what happens to them? What is going to happen to them? And my mother would always say, you know, well, you know, uh, we just leave that up to God. One day it's going to happen. You know, I don't know when and I don't know where. Right. And we may not be here to see it, 
But I guarantee you, one day, they're going to have to pay the price. Somebody's going to have to pay the price for what has happened, right? And I used to just roll my eyes, you know, and say to myself, yeah, right. You know, I wasn't sold on that. But, you know, now, when I look back on that, you know, I guess my mama and my elders, right, uh, they knew what they were talking about, like always, right? Because, again, like I say, this world is basically in turmoil, things are upside down and um uh the uh like i say the uh white dominant dominance of a uh, global society you know is uh is no longer right it is cracking at the seams okay and another thing i wanted to say is that uh this country uh you know america i mean the people that run it at uh, and the majority of the people that are here in this country, they have some uh, nerves, right, to, um, you know, push back the way they do against um, uh, immigrants, right? Because everybody, well, not everybody, you know, but they are for sure are immigrants uh, to this country. None of them are indigenous to this country. I mean, we've never had a leader or a president of this country that was indigenous to this country. So again, like I say, they are so hypocritical and they have uh, some nerves, right? And they really should be shamed of what they are doing to uh, the Hispanic uh, uh, community and the children who are being locked up in cages and um, separated from their family, right? Subjecting them to all kind of ills, uh, of society, right? I think that is so inhumane and so unjust, right? But, you know, they don't want to uh, take responsibility for anything. And again, that's why we find ourselves in the position that we find ourselves in now. And that's why another thing, you know, it really hurts me when I um, uh, hear African Americans saying that they don't want other black immigrants coming to their communities, right? I mean, I think that that also is really a shame, you know, specifically when it comes to uh, Haitian uh, immigrants, right? I mean, if it was not for Haiti and their um, uh, fight for independence, where would we as African Americans be in our um a fight for independence, right? And then when you look at that country and you see the shape that it's in and what is happening today and how America and other West Western nations have played a role in that country, how can you be that um, unempathetic or insensitive and say things like, you you know, you don't want them uh, coming uh, to your community? I mean, you say they can come to the country, but, that you know, they can't come to... Uh, the community, you know, I, again, I think that it's, um, you know, that, I mean, that is unfounded, right? And it's, and it's unfair and it's founded on the, uh, narratives that, uh, Westerners have told us about who, uh, uh, these African diaspora communities are, you know, just like they have told them, um, uh, who we are right? And that's not a positive thing, that's a negative thing, right? And so, um, before I sign off, I also, you know, of course, want to address the issue of African immigrants, right? It really uh, also breaks my heart to see uh, African immigrants uh, risking their lives to go to uh, these other North African countries or these other Western countries, right? Uh, when um, it, the best thing would be for them to stay in their countries and help them develop their countries, right? Uh, uh, again, like, uh, you know, I, I empathize with them and I understand why they leave in search of uh, better uh, educational and employment opportunities. But I mean, you're not going to find them there and the mistreatment that you uh, expose yourself to and the racism and discrimination that you expose yourself to in those countries are really not worth it. And even uh, uh, the possibility of death, right? And the possibility of being enslaved again, right? So uh, again, I, I um, the uh, prime minister of Italy, right? Uh, she talked about uh, the migrant situation at the uh, UN uh, assembly uh, just this past week, right? 
But for me, the only reason why she's talking about that is because it's impacting her country's uh, uh, economic or financial bottom line, right? If it wasn't doing, if it wasn't impacting uh, Italy's bottom line, then there would not be the cons level of concern that there is, right? I mean, she said that, um, uh, well, I heard that she ran on, 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 uh, she ran for office on that premise that she was going to get rid of, um, this immigration problem, right? And then at the, uh, UN assembly, she said that, you know, we really have to get to the root of, of the migrant problem, you know, so that we can, uh, solve it, right? And, and basically not just put a bandaid on it, but I just wanted to say to her, honey, you do know that you are at the root of the problem, right? You and your uh, greedy Western uh, counterparts, you are the ones who are at the root of the problem, right? You are at the foundation of the problem. So basically what uh, you all need to do, is, again, is to take your indignation and your self-righteousness and turn it on yourself and uh, figure out what is it that you can do to solve the problem that you help create, right? So again, I am Maria Juve, the real Africanus, and that is my two cent, okay? And don't forget to like, share, and uh, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. All right, I'll talk to you later. Fight the power, and never forget the ancestors. Peace.